what I can do is that I'm going to open up uh, Mathematica and uh, let's say open up a notebook and what I'm going to use is the pooch application to be able to discover the other notes. So just to give an idea of what this looks like is that I can use uh, under the pooch application select notes to be able to discover other nodes um, elsewhere in the cluster. Right now I'm just using uh, my uh, laptop right here, but I connected with it through a network connection over into the ACS cluster. And so we can see a whole bunch of excerpts uh, over there um, and look at their IP addresses and what their abilities are. But uh, we do have a Mathematica license on there, so uh, let's see if we can make use of that. So we've set up actually uh, actually something in the kernel to be able to do this, uh, that we have what we call um, an item called, called math pooch that allows you to uh, essentially uh, control all these other nodes uh, from the front end. So that's the kind of configuration that we do. So if I look at my uh, notebook here, what I'm going to do is just to be able to start a basic expression, just, just the variable high. What, it, what it's going to do is actually, if you can see in the background, is that it's, uh, Pooch is launching uh, the, the toolkit out onto the other nodes in the cluster. The other nodes out there will eventually discover uh, the uh, kernels that are available over on the X serves and then, and then set, up the, set up the order n squared communications pattern first over TCP IP and then to be able to establish that within the kernel as well. And so you can see that uh, in the lower right, there's a Mac MPI monitor window that is showing the status of communications. Red means it has, it's waiting on a receive from all the other messages. Um, and correspondingly, the other ones are also waiting on this information as well. So you can see it started up. But for the first, um, one of my first expressions that I'll, that I'll do is that I'll look at IDProc and NProc. These are two global constants that tell me the, this kernel's ID and, and as well as the number of processors, the ID of this processor and the number of processors in, to, in total on the cluster. And I can see that zero, zero and eight, zero is refers to the front end, but then there are, there are seven other kernels uh, out there running as well. So if I want to see what the answers are from the other kernels, what I can do is an MPI gather on this same expression. So it's going to send this expression out over there, out over to the other kernels, evaluate them there, and then collect them back in a linear array. And so we can see 0, 8, 1, 8, 2, 8, 3, 8, and so forth. So we can see that each one of them are giving different answers. And so we can make use of this ID proc to be able to, to, be able to identify or to be able to create different initial data. If I have an, ex if I have an expression like this, let's say, so that uh, A of, uh, say, take pi and multiply it by 1 plus ID proc, so this allows me to uh, say um, when ID proc is zero, then it'll be one pi, and then ID proc is one, then it's two pi, and so forth, and give me 222 digits of pi in each one of these cases. And then I have an MPI gather call that will get that will gather all that into D, uh, the, the the variable D. And so what I can see is that well, the answer for A on just this one was just pi, but if I look at D on on each one of these. Uh, that will give me, say, you know, 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, and so forth, um, all the way up to, say, 25.13 and so forth. And so those are the results on each one of those. This kind of feature allows me to do more complicated things. Um, so let's establish, say, a function where, um, a function of x where uh, it'll return x digits of pi. So if I say f of 13 or something, it'll return 13 digits of pi. So I, we have another high-level call that allows, that's called parallel function to list, that evaluates one through 100 of each one of these and collects them to processor number zero. So if I evaluate this one, uh, it'll go through and create, I, I can see that it started out with three point and then 3.1, 3.14, all the way up to 100 digits of a pi. And so it actually cut up, even though was, uh, 100 doesn't divide perfectly evenly into uh, into eight processors, it figured out uh, how to partition a hundred parts of the problem into on all these eight processors and then collect them all here so that, so I can see the answer in this case. Or I can do this with more complicated functions. And we have um, other basic functions such as, let's say, let's say I establish a, like a variable A, say two, four, five, six, seven, plus eight times ID proc. So this is something that will change, uh, that will be a different answer on each one of the processors out there. So in this, so processor 1 gets 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, and so forth, um, higher and higher numbers all the way to the, uh, the last processor. 
So I can do something like what we call an, the high level function called an edge cell that what it does is that it performs this copying of the guard cell from my neighbor uh, to my guard cell and, and then provides also m the edge of my space into the guard cell of my neighbor as well. So what I can see is that, well, it gave me, it, gave, it replaced the 2 with a 62 and a 7 with a, with a 12 in, in, on, on my part of the space. But if I want to see what's going on on the other parts of the problem space, I can do an MPI gather on A, and I can see that instead that the, uh, for example, my 6 got copied into the guard cell on, on, my, on the neighbor to my right, and then my 4 got copied into the last uh, guard cell on the last processor. And then I can see corresponding that uh, my 12 came from my neighbor on my right, then my neighbor provided a 14 over into the guard cell on, on my neighbor's right, and so forth th throughout the problem space. So you can see that this is imp implementing this kind of guard cell in basically just one, one call, one call within the mathematic environment. So, and let's say I want to do something more complicated, like I want to, if I, I can do this with, say, graphics, let's say I want to have like a large uh, suite of graphics, um, so I'm going to load the, the graphics animation library, and let's say establish a, a function b that, um, or a, 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 an expression b that will have a parallel table of eight different graphics. And so what I can do is that I can see all these, these eight different graphics in say, in, say, a graphics array. And so uh, I can see all the different parts that, that, that showed up here. Oh, actually, it specified uh, 12 instances. Um, in that one, so um, specified in it that in a two by uh, six array, and so I can show this as an animation, and so let that let that come up, and zoom out a little bit. And so once Mathematica interprets uh, the uh, graphics as, as an animation, and I can see that um, that the animation works. So this is an animation that was actually generated in a distributed fashion, and, like, and then I collected it together to be able to see the entire results um, on my machine here.